In this day and age, it's hard for a drift build to blow our minds. We've seen every chassis, every engine swap, every power upgrade, or have we? Because in this video, we are exclusively revealing the maddest drift build that's ever been conceived. Because we're in the Middle East with our friend Sultan, and he's about to blow all your minds. So we're here at store 17 with my man Sultan. I was just thinking today, it's been about 10 years since I met you for the first time. It's been a minute. And when I met you, yeah. you were a regular normal drifter with a V8 S13 yeah. doing normal drift things. Try again. <laughs> and then things got a little bit out of hand from there. And what we've done today, before we show you this outrageous new, I was gonna say build, but it's, it's even bigger, it's too small a word. <laughs> we're gonna talk through the history of what you've done over the last 10 years, because without the cars we're about to show you now, yeah. I don't think this one would have even been something you try. 100%. This is one that we remember from one of our very first Drift Games vlogs yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. Like back when we had like six videos on the internet, you built this car. Yeah. So this is a, this was a brand new car at the time, yes. the RCF. 2016. This was eight years ago. Eight right? years ago. So this was bought from the dealership. Actually, the dealership didn't even have the ones we wanted. This was US specs. Was, they just imported it and we stripped it, took out the engine. We put an LS and we put a supercharger. That's why there's a bump. <laughs> yeah, the little bump on the bottom. And then we took out the supercharger and now it's a stock LS. And it's fun. We, we dabbled into how to make our own angle kit. And because prior to this, the S13 was, we had uh, Darren who helped us out. He did the angle kits. And Darren in Group D for you yeah. guys, you'll see more of that later. Yeah. But I'm trying to get my head around here just to, because you are so casual with the way you say things. When this car was built, there was no other drift one of these in the world. No, so this the was first. the first one and you had no parts on the shelf, nothing. You had to build it all yourself. Yeah. We tried, it worked, it was fun, it looked good. And then that's how, other than the hood, like the candy, this red, I liked the color red and I started doing the Aston. Because this man's mind, it's, it's got a long story to where it's going to end up in this video. But the first thing to take from this car is you could figure out how to make a car yeah. a drift car. Yes. And you like candy red. Yes. And this car was kind of the first go. Yes. So we get the candy red. Yeah. We get the engine swap. Yeah. But then we take it a bit more serious on the second attempt. Yes. Which is the S15. And if I'm not mistaken, this was back in the day. Yeah. The first all carbon S15. When it came to Ireland, we started with, it was every single panel. It's still carbon, like the doors and everything. Still carbon under all this. Yeah, uh, we just, I like the Origin Labo because I saw all the boys in Ireland with the Origin Labo and slammed and everything. So I just, I painted it and I put the Origin Labo kit, but that's how the red from that came to this. And this was a full on comp car. It went yeah. to Europe. It competed here in the Emirates Drift Championship. And Oman. And so what we're getting here is, a little bit more conventional yeah, yeah. because there was available parts. Yes. But you decided to do a full carbon body, yeah. which no one had ever done before in an S15. Yeah. And we were starting to see the candy red theme come through eventually. Exactly. So this one was, when we brought this to Ireland the first time, blew people's minds. Yeah, it was, had the big intakes yeah, out yeah. the bonnet. It had all carbon fiber. Nobody knew what they were looking at. It's toned back a little bit in its looks, more, I'd say, street style, yeah, kind yeah. of drift style. But it was a wild car back in the day. Yes. And then, of course, you just gave up and said, that's all I'll ever need for drifting. There's no point in putting any more hassle on myself. Exactly. This is perfect. Then I went and did the 92. You did an E92 Eurofighter after that. So you were very, con you get into a little more conventional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we went completely the other way again. I realized I liked my touch. Like, he does great stuff. AJK, you, you have yeah. a car, so, you know, it's top notch, but it wasn't my thing. I just put it together. Okay, so we have a full carbon car, but this wasn't the only full carbon drift car you built. Yeah, we did the 370. Remember that one? Yeah. Very briefly. Very nice. I love the finish of full carbon. I just didn't like the car. 
uh, wasn't me, so uh, I decided to do that onto the S15. I get you. So I'm trying to be a, a bit of a psychologist here. <laughs> so he liked the fact that this was unique, yeah. but that was a ball ache. Yeah. And then he decided to go a little bit more conventional, S15, 370Z, E92 yeah. Eurofighter. Yeah. And then you went completely back <laughs> to where we started because, let's be honest, you like figuring out things yourself and having something one of one. I think it's more fun to build it. Try to have fun, man. Build it, have fun with it. Just do work around the budget you have. So. Yeah. You've been here, you see like, it's not throwing no, there's, money. There's a, there's a cleverness to it. <laughs> exactly. And cars, especially exotic cars, yeah, they're... are quite discarded here. Yeah. So they become almost like we were saying before, the next car, the shell of the car is probably the same price as 100%. this. That one at least. Yeah. yeah, but so what I'm thinking is you, you go to something one of one and then the car that I think blew everyone's mind yeah. is this one. I look like a bag of money I'm on. They want to know what I'm on. Got a diamond stance. So then you decide to build a full, Forge Carbon yeah. Aston Martin drift car. Yeah. Which a lot of people would have said at the start, this is just, you know, classic Middle East. Uh, but these Vantages were getting very cheap at the time. Yes, they were, and it was towards the end of their lifetime. The new one wasn't out yet. It was a running car. I actually bought it in manual thinking I'll run the stock pedal box. It was, it was, a, it was a long shot. So we took everything out and spoke to a few people. Like Matt Field is kind enough to advise me on the transaxle stuff. And we figured it out. It was brilliant. It was perfect. And this is LS powered as well. LS Every, twin everything. turbo. LS twin turbo. This one's LSA. We took off the supercharger. It was a brand new crate engine. Someone wanted supercharger. We took that. I took the rest of it, put twin turbos. And, and of did. course, the, the kit on this car is also very unique. Yes, ACR. And I have to say, I bought so many kits from around the world. They have by far, by far, by standing by the cleanest kit, which of like, just put it on the car and it works. We obviously didn't use theirs. We had to make our own to keep it flexible and everything. So out of the box, it was brilliant. The, the big thing about this car that a lot of people might not realize is that it's aluminum chassis. Yes. So you can't weld to it. Yeah. So everything has to be bolted on, which is a bit like the Corvette, but also a challenge because you have to basically try and make a car safe that isn't, it's, it's more of a GT3 style than a drift style. We found the GT3 spec, cause you've seen them in Yas and stuff. So we found the standard of GT3 and we did the roll cage according to what the GT3 cars are. So, I mean, if it's good for GT3, it should be fine for drifting. And to be honest, the car is very reliable, very nice to drive. It was, my, it's competitive. It is very That's competitive. That's the weirdest thing. Yeah. When you came out with this car, I went, cool. Novelty car, yeah. great. Love, love looking at it, it's so different. And then you came out and it drove like any other car on the track. It wasn't like just a weird car. No, it was, it great. was actually working. The angle kit on this car, if I'm not mistaken, is from another car. Yeah, it's super lower control arm, and then you just the hubs had to be tweaked a bit, but it was it was easy. So Mark IV Super suspension Pretty or angle kit. Then you got a wide body from Japan yeah. to put on an English car and put an, an American engine in it. So simple, simple as to him. <laughs> so that's what this is. This car represented to me how far you could push things. Yeah. Then I think you took a swerve from the competitive stuff and then said, well, what if I didn't have to make the car competitive and I just made it cool? Yeah. And then we ended up with, well, I, it, even some of the sentences you're gonna hear here, you, I know you're used to hearing them. A fully carbon fiber Bentley Continental Drifter. It was fun. It was, but the car didn't get enough love because during COVID and I, like, I didn't drive it much. It does have a quick change. It has a beautiful LS7 ITBs. The car weighs nothing. Engine base, 3D scanned, engine mods to the head. It has everything, but it's just... Yeah, it just kind of was just done and it worked. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like it wasn't enough of a challenge for you. It actually came together pretty easy. It was, it was, and it, it was during COVID, so it wasn't like, I was like, well, I'm not driving. Where it. do you go? Uh, exactly. Yeah. But this is on ITBs, this one. ITB, LS7, so it's seven, 427 cubic, seven liter engine. ITBs, and yeah, it's just every bell and whistle, basically. So this is the question everyone's going to be screaming at the screens now. Yeah. How much did it start when it weighed at the start of it, and then how much did it weigh at the end? Because this weighs absolutely nothing. And these are heavy cars. I wanted to learn. Like, it's super flex for carbon. We were trying different stuff with carbon fiber. I remember the door. I forgot what the car weighs, to be honest. It's been a while. We did a few builds after that. It's got to be over two ton, the standard car. Oh, but wait, way wait, over well, well over it. And it's definitely under 15. It's a ton. Literally one ton is out but for example the door it was 52 kilos per door and it's two and a quarter now or 170 less than two kilos per door so we shaved 50 kilos per door 
You took a ton yeah. out of the car. The seats were 15 kilos each. That's they're out. Yeah, well, Bentley is one company that goes, just put it in there. Yeah. No one's going to weigh the thing. So you took a ton out of this. Yeah, literally. So this was about making something, again, LS, very lightweight. Can I be honest? This was actually very cheap. Before COVID, we were thinking, oh, we need a practice car. And we're looking at S chassis. And they're, like you said, they're creeping. In the UAE and like in America, you can find flood damage or whatever. Full running, well, broken engine or broken gearbox or something actually cheaper than an S chassis. And you can Google it. It's not like I'm not a, like you people know, forget. Do, do you want to know something? Yeah. <laughs> I think now in the UK and Ireland, it's the same. Yeah, I think you can buy one of these so cheap much right cheaper as a chassis than an S15 yeah. or whatever. So that to me was mind blowing because even you had to make the headlight covers, everything yeah. is so custom. We just, and the fact that you took a ton of weight out of the car, this is a very lightweight chassis. And then we have the freshest build, which it has to be the most perfect example of escalation of a project. Interesting story is that this is actually my old car. So when I had this car many years ago, it was built by Darren McNamara and then there was an engine from DM Sport and there was also a Group D built it. Yeah. SR20, 400 horsepower, SR20 it was box. Great. It was great. Lovely car. I drove in it for two or three I, years. I drove it once. It so amazing. Darren saw it, drove it once, loved it. Did he leave it alone? Absolutely not. I'm not sure what's left from my car. I don't think anything. Everything has been changed. Even the cage. Yeah. The cage has been changed. The fabrication's been changed. Modernized, I guess, because the car I, I, when I had it was maybe getting to that sort of first generation drift car. Yeah, yeah. This is definitely a third, fourth generation drift car. And of course, we started with an SR20. Yeah. And where do we end up? Of course. Back with an LS again. Exactly. In a very, very light chassis. Yes. And tough to make work in these cars because they are built to have a 1.6 little tiny, this car would have come with 110 horsepower, 120 horsepower, and you have the same size wheels, but now how much horsepower? Uh, I forgot. Well, you, you should, you had I think a, it's somewhere around five something. Five right? something, yeah, yeah. yeah. But a beautiful build. It was fun. Simple build. I just wanted it on 15s. That's why I didn't go too much. It's, it's a yeah. simple LS, LS2, not even a three, just built. And we needed to keep it on 15, but we we'll try to not too much torque. That's why it's small intake, small everything. It does the job. But then this one car for me, so if you look at back at it, what this looks to me is it's aero. It's aero. A lot of aero on this car. Yeah, so yeah. if you look back through all of these cars, you start with figuring things out yourself. Then you got the candy red and, and you get that little inspiration. Then the carbon comes in. The carbon comes in heavy. <laughs> the LSs come in heavy. Yeah. The making custom angle kits, custom things come in heavy. And then I don't think anybody in the world has these cars like this. Then I said, surely now, at this stage, that'll be that. And then it became a story that you told me the idea of this car, and I didn't even believe that you were going to make it. And then I saw it drift six months later. <laughs> and to me, this is probably the wildest achievement you've had yet, because this car definitely shouldn't be a drift. Now it was, uh, it was a handful, let's say. To put it together was easy, but when you, we actually came to drive it, the whole weight distribution was a disaster. It's still running McPherson. We didn't cut any of the tubs. Everything is factory. So I was about to point at the engine, but the engine ain't there in this one. It's not even mid-engine, it's no. rear engine. Rear so engine. the engine is behind the rear wheels, yeah. and it's an LS again. Of course. Uh, the, the, here's the thing, I didn't cut any of the firewall. It's still running Porsche subframe and a Porsche gearbox, because I wanted to keep it as, not stock, but realistic. It's still a Porsche. It's still a Porsche. Yeah. You know, you can actually build a street version of the, uh, which I had, the black one back yep. in the day. Without the angle kit, it sits fine. So this is a, for those of you who don't know, this is a 997. Yeah. Could, could be a 996 similar. The front end is completely different and all of it's different because of the old new kit from Japan. So this is like a, almost like a Le Mans tribute style kit or like a GT car. GT so it's a mix. Car. They wanted the slant nose from the factory Porsche well, back in the day. And I think they, the wing and the wide bodies for like the, the Japanese track day cars like the RWB and stuff, yep. they do a lot of that. That's why I even chose to stay with the SSRs, like Japanese wheels, because it's a, the JDM feel. It's and JDM stuff. inspired. Yeah, yeah. JDM kit, JDM yeah. wheels, American engine, and behind the rear axle, 
Porsche gearbox and still quite a bit of German left in the car as well. But there's a lot of detail on this. Like again, we have the carbon, which, you know. You Everything, like the door is not stock. We had to, we made the door from scratch, door frame, the roof, the trunk, the hood, the fender. Everything's made from scratch. You saw when it was bare shed. Yep. Not even subframe on it. And I just didn't understand why you were doing it. it was but fun. now, when I, I, and it drifted really well because you had to figure out weight distribution and stuff like that. But this is a car that shouldn't exist as a drift car. Even you would admit there is no other drift Porsche in the world. There's been Porsches that drift, but to this level of engineering, to weight balance, to distribution, this got me thinking about moving on to what we're moving on to very soon, which we've been teasing, yeah. is that there's a big difference between building a drift car or just drifting a car. Yeah, true. So any rear wheel drive car can drift. True. That's, and if you put a handbrake in it, it can kind of drift well. Mm. But to give it angle, to make it balanced, to make it actually drift like an S15, 13, 14, you even said this drives similar to a 350Z. Yeah, because it's like you're pivoting in the middle. It's weird. But that's, to me, even <laughs> insane. But I watched it drift, and it, there's something it does to your mind yeah, yeah. when you watch it, that it shouldn't do what yeah. it's doing. And that was my, so this is, this car, I have to say this, went to players in Goodwood. And it's the first ever car in their history that won car of the show and also drifted in the demo. Yeah. Like that's never happened before. Everyone was polishing their car for the judges and you were out doing burnouts on the track. I mean, you know, if uh, any race car can be a show car if it's built correctly, in my opinion. People think, oh, it's just another, all these LS is just another LS. It's not like I'm yanking it out of a junkyard from a truck and putting it in the car. They're all built, all fresh pistons, con rods, bearings, everything, ARP studs, heads, bottom end. So like they're all built to last. The Corolla didn't need power. We just needed it to last in Europe because the plan was pre-COVID was to do a European series somewhere. But COVID happened, got married. So that's on a pause for now. What I love about it is you could build novelty cars here yeah. and people would be happy. Yeah. They're not novelty cars. This would never pass any tech inspection for most championships, yeah. but you could just line up on the grid safety-wise, power-wise, and control-wise the same as any other car on the grid. True, true. Which is an incredible thing to do with something that nobody else has even, you can't even make a phone call and go, hey, other guy that built the Porsche drift car, what do I do? You yeah. have to figure it out in your hands. So what we've learned through all of this, ladies and gentlemen, is that at about 4% of his idea, everyone else would have given up because there's nothing to tell you it'll work at the end. That's the risky part. You can put a handbrake and an angle kit on any car, but to make a drift car, you don't know until you get the finished product like this, whether it'll actually be a big waste of time or not. Sure. And then even if it is a waste of time, he'll re-engineer it to make it work in the end anyway. And that brings us on to the reason we're here yeah. and the reason we're gonna show you his new build and why that came about. So I thought I was being clever. <laughs> I thought I was being a bit of Sultan and going, I'm gonna buy a Lamborghini Gallardo, I'm gonna put a 2JZ in the back and I'm gonna make it into a wide body drift car. So Tan can do this, <laughs> then I can build a 2JZ Lamborghini drift car. And I have him to call too, so he, he'd probably be able to figure it out. And I thought, for once, for once I would have the one up on him. Until I got a call two weeks ago, and he says, you might wanna jump on a plane and see what we're building. I saw this a couple of days ago. My jaw, I think about an hour ago, we managed to get it back up a little bit. You guys are gonna see it for the first time anywhere in the world on the Drift Games channel. How do we even describe this? I think the best thing to do, guys, is just to show you where we're starting from. So, I mean, I don't know how to say this out loud, and I definitely didn't expect it, because I didn't see this until I came here a couple of days ago. We're building a McLaren drift car. Yeah, we'll try. We'll try. You're trying to build, and you do good record of doing okay at this kind of stuff, but I want to just explain to the viewers at home that, yes, it's a McLaren drift car, yes, it's a supercar, it's going to be a drift car. A lot of people, you guys at home will probably say, but there's loads of supercar drift cars. There's the Liberty Walk one that Daigo drives, the Murcielago, Mad Mike has the Huracan, we have got Arios in Japan has a McLaren, very similar. GT3? In, yeah, GT3. But those cars, as insane as they are, they're basically a stock car with a handbrake and an angle kit and some additional stuff to make them drift. They're not a purpose-built drift car because no one would chop one up to do that in the first place, which is what I thought. 
But basically, what you're trying to do here is reinvent the car. The fact that it's a McLaren is only the starting point. It's not a, you're not trying to make a McLaren drift. You're trying to make something one of one. Yeah, obviously, Kaiser's designing a body kit that's... Just a casual first sentence there. <laughs> the Kaiser is designing a one of one body kit. Kaiser's, you know, his stuff is insane. I've always wanted to try to work with him. And this is the perfect excuse. And I needed something wide for the angle kit and everything. And there's a lot of tricks because obviously McLaren is not going to build something. It's not a normal coilover. You can just, I can't even change them to be honest because they run this, got what the system is called. You don't need the anti sway bar or it transfers pressure. So it's very intriguing. It's very interesting. And the engine sounds so good. Well, uh, just before yeah. you even go any further, yeah. and I'm only stopping you because I know <laughs> you're skipping past some bits that people at home are going to want to know. Uh. So right now they're thinking, where did he find this crashed McLaren, this flood damaged McLaren, this McLaren that someone just left in the desert? I'm going to give you guys some footage from two weeks ago. <laughs> Hey, feet five four, nothing to a giant. Waited my turn, call it perfect time and trust the most high. Got the stars aligned and I was tapped in. I've been strategizing, dreams coming true. I've been fantasizing why you criticize. Pay attention to the signs, symbolize. Feel like a legend, they go wide the lies. Hey, I'm a hero, wear my cape. Independent leader made a way. I'm the people's voice here, people rate. Stuck to my pace, the turtle win the race. There's trophies on trophies, views from the townscape. Change is great, pray, then I had to skate. God told me time to go elevate, chosen child. I'm the champ now, not a feather. So this is this was, definitely not now, a fully working car with warranty. Yeah, till April. <laughs> I think you voided the warranty. Uh, pretty much. I'm pretty now. sure if you brought that back in, they're gonna say something has gone wrong. <laughs> Something's missing. <laughs> so where did you get the car? Why? How? Yes, you might find flood damage crashed and stuff, but because it's a McLaren and it's a monocoque with aluminum, like the, I don't even know where to start to fix it, if it's damaged. Good point. One of the earlier McLarens at MP12 that were changing into a 650 front end and all that fancy stuff. The guy who I bought it from extended warranty till April 24th. I was like, okay, thank you very much. But I don't know much about McLaren engines. I don't even, even 2Js, you know, like I'm humble. We, we've, seen to the, say, we've seen the pattern I just do the, the LSs. LSs. I just and know I'll LSs. be honest, <laughs> I'm not saying many people watch drift games have McLarens. <laughs> Seen some videos. <laughs> they look like they go on fire quite a bit and yeah. they do break down quite a bit. What happened? So if it's gonna be a drift car, reliability is key, but also you knowing so much knowledge about that makes perfect sense because yes, the engine is now no longer in the car. Like catching fire and stuff, when I, you hear that stuff, it's because it's not because of the car. You might find something someone left in when they pop the hood or something. The engine's very intriguing. The way the 3.8, the mechanics of the water pumps, a work of art. But I don't know where to start to make it. <laughs> hey, love, I just compliments all of McLaren that's it, but then I got rid of it because I don't know anything about it. You saw it sitting there. Yeah. It, it is like the water pumps on the side, the alternator is behind it. If I need to boost it up, it makes 675. I, it's plenty for drifting. To leave it on the rev limiter and stuff like that, I don't know much about McLaren. And, and the one thing that a lot of people don't realize if they're about drift cars, yeah as opposed to a car that can drift, yeah. you're gonna be sitting on the rev limiter a lot more. Yeah. Cause in most supercar, any supercar, you're going through the gears, boom, 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 down through the gears, boom, boom, boom. You're not sitting in one gear. And at slow speeds, like even the front rads and this doesn't even have fan, the auxiliary radiator doesn't need fans. So something like this might cause an issue if you're on a, like a small track just to have fun. Exactly. So I'm gonna go through all of the questions. Uh, I've tried to save them. Uh, before we get to the engine that you're going to put in this car, because I think people will probably guess it, but we're going to just show it anyway in a little bit. I have so many questions. Okay. Firstly, the front of this car is from a different car. Yeah. Well, so I'm, I don't know if you guys want to come around and have a look at this. So, so basically they came up to 2014 or 16. I forgot. I'm not sure. And then obviously see all the stickers and the spray because we're going to run a 650. The reason why we took the scan is because we're going to mesh it with... Um, Kaisel's design and then try to make 3D print them and then make a mold out of carbon and make our own kit. Just going to rewind that just to show you that process as easy as he makes it sound is you take a car, yeah. you, you then take the newer version of that car's front end, Yes. you then scan that on the car, Yes. then you give it to a guy who makes a, th this is a third front end, Yes. which is the body kit, Yes. and then you're finished with it, which is all custom. No, you 3D print it, then you have to make it again because you can't put the plastic on the car. 
then we're going to do another step. Yeah. So take the car, take the panels off it, put new panels, put new panels from a newer car on it, scan those panels, print them 3D, yeah. then make the molds, yes. then put them back on the car. And hope that the design works. Uh, we struggle just putting rivets yeah. into a, an S body <laughs> Origin Labo kit. And this is newer front end, which will look really fresh. Whole body is going how much wider than the standard car, do you think? It's going to be wide. Very wide? Yeah, like wide. I haven't seen one of Kaiser's designs that's not <laughs> very wide. So I would imagine so. And I can't wait to see it. I Many think. questions still. Yeah. Angle kit. Yes. For the car. This looks like it has an angle kit. This is done. That's on the floor. This is here. What do you mean it's done? So you've you've done the angle kit. Yeah, angle kit's not the problem. Now we have 3D scan. The Porsche we didn't we just did it like you know, figured it out yeah. somewhere. This was 3D scanned and actually engineered and found we scanned like the other side still has the stickers. We scanned to see if it's gonna touch the rad or the carbon shroud in the rear, because this protects the door from all the dust. The upper arm's done lower, the hubs are done because I wanted to run 370 hubs. I, I found like they're brilliant. <laughs> 370 hubs are on the Porsche with ARP studs. Sorry. Okay. So you're telling me that this car is going to run a five by 114 wheel fitment yeah, with from 370 hubs? And with ARP studs. And then and the trick is I still wanted to run the McLaren brakes and they are, if you see from the back, they're AP racing. Oh, so they're actually, oh, they're, they're there really, you go. Yeah. AP Racing make the standard brakes on yeah. the McLaren. And definitely need to upgrade them. <laughs> exactly. That, that's for reference. Yeah. They're massive. Factory brakes come two piece. We took off the center and we made our new center piece for a 5x114 Nissan bearing and twerks like so. These are hubs. You can see we even have uh, lock stoppers. We have Ackerman adjustment and, and the brake. Uh, this is wild. Yeah, so you have a full one of one angle kit for this car. Yeah, it's done. And it's technically going to run Nissan bearings and wheels. Yeah. I kept on geeking on that video when you were guys were in Japan. <laughs> They're running 18 inch and it would be so much easier. Yeah. But if you, you can't run McLaren brakes. So we're, we're talking about the Arius car, yeah, yeah. which is a GT3 race car, yeah. which Daigo did an, an angle kit for, okay. and a handbrake. I don't think to this extent, but it has more lock. But that car is basically a race car that has a handbrake and a bit of angle. This is a street car, <laughs> so this is a lot more things, but he has the standard McLaren wheels, like not the standard, but the GT3 wheels. I don't know what wheels, but 18s won't fit the brakes. Okay, so you gotta go bigger. You have to run at least 19. And if you do 20, it's gonna hit. But because yes, it's a it's gonna be a drift car, but I wanted to drive it on a road, like go out, like photo shoots, have fun. 63 degrees of angle. If we go a bit more offset, we might get a few more. But the scrub radius is great. The the there's nothing rubbing. The Ackerman is great. So the KPI is great. The cambers are between three and five, depending on how much I go. So you can actually drive it. Insane. So we're gonna move on now to um, <laughs> just the Nissan 370Z bearing and. But you know why we do that? Like yeah. the Porsche, because we're running 370 axles on the, on the Porsche. And then we're like... You understand that nobody says these sentences. <laughs> and it just, you say them so casually. And I'm like, you know the way we run the 370Z axles on the Porsche? Well, we've learned from that. And, and, but you guys can see now, look how the progression of all those things. What is a challenge to him is definitely a different than a challenge for us because you've worked around these yeah. problems before. So you now have a starting point to figure all this out. I can't hold it on any longer because the engine for this car <laughs> is going to be like nothing you else but well, definitely nothing else in a McLaren anywhere because this is the bit that the purists out there are probably <laughs> going to have an issue with. So this is the engine you're putting into a McLaren. Theoretic. So this is a LS. Yes. Which is normally in the front of a car sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is the biggest you can go right now. It has the big Mass 305, the black label heads. And this is the biggest intake I have in the shop. And it's just to test fit, because if this clears, we have no problems. So talk us through the planned engine spec for the car. So we're going to go with, obviously, an LS. You spoke briefly about this, the PDK. which is a Porsche PDK yeah. bolted on. So you got German gearbox bolted onto an American engine. Swedish bell housing. Swedish adapter. bell housing into an English car. Yeah, an American engine. So. Obviously. Anyway, let's continue with normal talk with Sultan. <laughs> so basically, are you going to run turbos on this? Yeah, so well, the plan is because I'm not going to push too much power. Like I'm going to try to leave it down to 650 max. I'm still not sure about the gearbox. Yeah, uh, true. Uh, you know, and gradually I can, it's just 
put up the boost because the engine is going to be built to the T. It's a completely built LS3, sleeved block, going to have CNC heads and everything, valves, pistons, rods, and twin turbos. So, I mean, it's going to have everything, all the bells and whistles. It's going to be easy to add the power, but to begin with, we'll be conservative around 650. I, I don't think we can go lower. So me. these gearboxes come from? Out of a 917. So these came from 2012 to 2016, and they came on Caymans. And the reason why, it's the same as the 997, like the Porsche I had. Yep. The only difference is transaxle, this one has the engine up front versus having the gearbox, then the engine. And this is a very similar gearbox, like the Carrera GT and all those kind of... Not Carrera GT, that was a normal... Oh, that, that was a normal manual. That's a different... Cayman. No, it's a Carrera, normal Carrera. Carrera. A Carrera, Porsche Turbo, the normal Carrera Porsche. Yeah, yeah. That's the same, but the... And how did you even think of doing this? Last year in Poland, we met the guys from HTG, and he was like, do you want to put a Carrera box in that one? Like a PDK? I didn't even know that was a thing. I started reading into it. I was like, wow, that's brilliant. And that was the plan. We actually do have a, pro a gearbox, and that was the initial plan of going to Europe with Panamera and the other car that... I don't know if we're seeing it, it's still, we didn't even, we've kind of started, we took a pause for this, but that was the plan to put a PDK on that other car, but then I was like, hold on, let's do a McLaren, and <laughs> let's have fun. You uh, see how things escalate around here. Yeah. And again, this is the mad part for me, is that this is like, sem I call it semi-automatic, but it's, yeah. it's true automatic and true kind of electronic manual, because the clutch pedal is an electronic signal, that to the ECU or to the gearbox, right? Yes. So that basically it disengages. It's a dual clutch system. So yeah. it is a clutch that you're going to engage and disengage and you can actually slip. I haven't tried it. Many people praise it, but it's apparently the best of two worlds. Uh, we'll see. So this is a first for you also. Oh on yeah, this 100%. Because obviously putting an LS in a Porsche, it's not going to be very easy to put in this, obviously. Yeah. But I would say that, you, you know, this is a new thing for you, this, this, this gearbox setup. So my mind is it's racing because I've tried for the last couple of days not to pay too much attention to it because I wanted you to explain it on camera to everybody because I knew there was just weird stuff going on over here. So what's the time scale? We're in March. Wow. So three, two months, two, three months. Yeah. So we have three months. Three months? Three months to be in Europe, so I don't know if it's going to go on a boat. Or... Sorry, three months to ship it out of here to Europe. So we're going to be following this on the Drift Games channel because we're making a couple of trips back here. Thank you so much for allowing us to oh, take a space in your workshop. Mi casa, su casa. Yeah, so we're here messing around with less complicated things than this, but we'll get to that in the next episode. But for us to be able to even be here to watch this go together, it's just, it's almost like just amazing to watch something be created from scratch that shouldn't make any sense and is being probably pushed as far as anyone's pushed any drift build because it's so unknown. We'll and that, try. That's mental to me. I, I mean, listen, I, I usually push the announcement of the project towards the end once I see it kind of is working, but... I'm like, realistically, I'm going to wing it on this one. He's like, given us the exclusive <laughs> rights here because we're here, but also because there's a purpose to it. Yeah. <laughs> the purpose to this is that we're going to try and have a first European supercar twin battle at some events this year. So just to let you know what that means, we've got an Italian car with a Japanese engine, so that's our Lamborghini with the 2JZ, going to be trying to do a twin battle with an English car with an American engine and a German gearbox. <laughs> And all of that in the public eye to see if it all works together. And your car is, go we're, we're obviously going Liberty Walk, custom one of one, Strom wheels. You're going entire body one of one, yeah. custom wheels one of one. There is nothing else that's ever been built like this car before. I don't think so. To the extent. But let's hope it works. That's why I never, like, I'm kind of ambitious with my projects, but this one, I, I don't know if I kind of So bit. last year we knew the Porsche was coming, yeah. but we weren't allowed to film it because you didn't know if it would work or not. We've thrown you in at the deep end now because you've got probably two and a half months to build this entire car. I don't even know. I've, I've struggled to get gearboxes changed in two and a half months back in Ireland. So you're going to build this whole car from scratch and hopefully ship it to Europe so at some point this year meet up with our Lamborghini at a couple of events and go do some drifting. You put me on the spot now cars. as I'm like sweating bullets now so. We are going to try and follow both builds as we go along in the next couple of episodes which we're going to try and bang out while we're here we're going to be showing you guys our engine conversion alongside your makes our engine conversion seem very shit now but we're basically going to be doing it side by side for a little while then we're going to jump in and back to see the progress over the next few months and then hopefully everything works out. This is a very strange thing for Sultan. He would never do this normally. I've totally forced him into showing the car way, way, way too soon. So now there's even more pressure because before, all you would be disappointing is yourself because no one knew it existed. This time, there's now going to be expectation on this car. But I think with the history of what you've done before, you've come around so many hurdles. And you have such a great team around you, then hopefully this is something along the same.
Perfect. All right, guys, well, we've, we told you it was an exclusive. We built up a little bit of hype, but there's no way even we could have predicted what this guy is gonna be doing. At our new home here at Store 17 in the UAE, we'll be doing an engine conversion, as you guys know, within this week, and it's gonna be exciting. So check out the next few episodes. We'll also be keeping you up to speed on this car. But I just wanna say thank you to Sultan for one, letting us film the car. He's very uh, humble and private about his bills. This one is gonna be a little bit more in the public eye. So I wanna, you guys show him a lot of support because this is just pushing the boundaries beyond anything anyone's done. And also, I wanna say, follow their YouTube channel. So we're gonna jump in and out of this project, but if you wanna see all the intricate technical stuff, Sammy and the guys are filming the whole project start to finish. If you go to Store 17 Official, I'll put a link in the description below. Hit them with a subscribe. If you haven't seen the amazing stuff that's going on here and you're a car fan, you gotta hit subscribe. You gotta make sure to follow them on Instagram and on YouTube. I'll put the links below. Um, and yeah, we got a wild year ahead. Two Jay-Z Lamborghini versus LS Twin Turbo and McLaren. Twin battles are coming to Europe. There's your bombshell. We'll see you next time.